stand up South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a COVID thing. A very good morning, Africa Zonga, Africa and the world. I bring you the special edition of the EFF podcast from the beautiful and the great Moses Mabida Stadium in Deben, KwaZulu Natal, uh, the economic hub of South Africa. And on today's episode, I'm joined by the EFF uh, Secretary General, we call him the SG Commissar, uh, Marshal Zamini, joins me now. A very good morning to you, uh, Commissar Marshal Zamini. Thanks for making time. Good morning, fighter Titus, and uh, we greet the leadership, of the EFF, uh, the battalion of the EFF, the membership, yes. uh, the people of South Africa, uh, mm -hmm. in the, the in the continent, the fighters in the continent, in the, the diaspora, mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for inviting us, and yeah. we're grateful to be part of this uh, beautiful and progressive podcast of, yeah. the, of the EFF. So thank you for inviting. Mm -hmm. us as the SGO to come and, and sit down with you. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been uh, mm -hmm. uh, longing to sit down with you for the longest time, SG. And now finally, we have you and we're gathering here now at Moses Mabida, where the EFF, of course, is going to launch it, uh, its manifesto on the 10th of February. Uh, just to give us the gist of why the EFF actually uh, decided to choose uh, Moses Mabida for, for the launch of the manifesto. Look, the leadership of the EFF, the CCT resolved that mm -hmm. uh, we must, uh, on this historic year, mm -hmm. where uh, the politics of this country, they're going to change after the mm -hmm. national elections. They mm -hmm. resolved that we must come to uh, Moses Mabidia mm -hmm. uh, to launch the People's Manifesto here. Uh, on, 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 on simple basis, one well, a difficult decision, yeah. because one, uh, Kwazulu Natal is the home of the EFF, yes, and so that absolutely. is an undisputed fact, because mm -hmm. The voters of KZN mm -hmm. uh, in 2019, they came in, in their numbers and then they said, uh, we are here in KZN mm -hmm. and we are voting for this organization. This is our organization. This is organization of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why even those that call themselves specialists, they do polling. Mm -hmm. they, they could not anticipate uh, the turnout and the support of the EFF mm -hmm. uh, in 2019. They were shocked. So. There was no any other province that the leadership uh, decided it was important to come. But also, mm -hmm. if you're a serious player in the politics of South Africa, mm -hmm. you'd know that Wazulu Natal accounts for the second uh, voter population of after Gauteng. So if you think you're a serious player yeah. and, uh, and, and uh, you're not scared of uh, the work that you've done, and you're an organization that is represented nationally, mm -hmm. part of your strength is to come to Wazulu Natal. So we're going to be here on the... 10th of February, mm -hmm. uh, the fighters are ready all over the province, mm -hmm. uh, from Kongste to Mklabia mm -hmm. They are coming here in numbers, uh, we're going to pack this to the rafters and uh, uh, await for the Commander-in-Chief to mm -hmm. give us some command when he's yeah. delivering the people's manifesto, mm -hmm. which will uh, lead to a decisive victory for the EFF come mm -hmm. the elections uh, uh, this year. So, we are home. This is, uh, this is home. It's, uh, the fighters, they can't wait uh, to come here to this Moses Mabida. And look yeah. like it's becoming very small now. Because, yeah. Uh, we look like the leadership must sure. start looking at other issues because the fighters are saying mm -hmm. uh, we are ready to come and, uh, and, and demonstrate to anyone mm -hmm. who ever doubted the capacity of this organization that it's a national organization. It, uh, it, uh, it is uh, available and it's, uh, it's alive on all corners mm -hmm. of the country, including what uh, politically is known mm -hmm. as a Difficult terrain, which is Basel Natal, but EFF is here. So, mm -hmm. you uh, on the 10th, uh, everyone is invited to mm -hmm. be here yeah. in the stadium. That's why we're already uh, seated comfortably uh, in the stadium. We're in charge of this uh, terrain. <laughs> yeah, and of course, uh, we're just uh, you know telling everyone that we are ready to welcome them. And of course, the people of uh, Umzimkula, I hope they will be here as well, your, your hometown. No, definitely. That's, uh, that's my hometown. That's mm -hmm. where I was born and raised. Mm -hmm. and uh, everything else. So they are coming here. My what, what, 20? Mm -hmm. uh, they are ready. They are coming here. And, mm -hmm. and all the words of Umzi mm -hmm. all the 22 of them, uh, the region is coming. Mm -hmm. The entire uh, province, it's, yeah. uh, it will be here. So mm -hmm. it's all systems go. We, we are ready. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing that is going to disrupt us. 
uh, between now and the 10th. Uh, mm -hmm. all, all roads are clear, the systems are in place, the yeah. authorities have been informed, mm -hmm. stadium management, everything is in place. We're just waiting for the day, there's nothing else to do now. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about Umzim Kulu, where you were born. Perhaps if you can just paint a picture of the type of uh, area Umzim Kulu is, and the type of uh, childhood you have had, and uh, why have you decided to be uh, a politician? Look, I was born in Mzumkulu, it's, uh, it's in the south of KZN. It used to be uh, uh, in the Eastern Cape uh, oh. during apartheid times. Okay. Uh, and then uh, it was under trans sky. So at mm -hmm. some stage, we uh, were colonized by, uh, or were led by Wolomisa. When okay. Wolomisa was a uh, oh, prime Bando minister Olomisa. of uh, trans sky. <laughs> yeah. uh, when he took over mm -hmm. power, he uh, uh, did a coup. Oh. So once in the... Uh, in uh, in Transkai, and mm -hmm. after 1994, then Mzumkulu came back uh, to be incorporated to KZN. Mm -hmm. So, so we grew up there. So the issue of apartheid, we know about, we know about it because there was a border there okay. that used to separate uh, South Africa and uh, Transkai because mm -hmm. Transkai was an independent uh, Bantu state. Mm -hmm. So there was a border there. So we understood apartheid as we were very young okay. growing up because. My parents, my mother is from Escort, which is uh, uh, in the in mid Midlands of mm -hmm. uh, Wazul Natal. Mm -hmm. So every time, uh, because we, when we were young, mm -hmm. so there was a limit. I think it was uh, three children per passport per parent. Oh. So every time we would uh, want to go and visit my uh, mother's home in, uh, in mm -hmm. Escort, mm -hmm. we would go to the border gate, okay. uh, because uh, I grew up with six of us as siblings. Mm -hmm. So we would go to the border gate, and then we'd sit there uh, waiting for a train mm -hmm. or a, a bus. But my mother would have to speak to other parents coming from a uh, trans guy to say, I'm going to really show me your passport. Mm -hmm. to, uh, you, you've got a list of your children, as long as I'm within the same age group. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hand over these children so that you cross with them. And then we, you, you're going to be told that this is your parent and this is the name. Okay. So that's how I would cross. Even on the way back, mm -hmm. Uh, coming uh, from uh, escort, going back to Transkai, you go to the same and you see those racist Africaners there oh, okay. waiting and then you'll be handed over to a parent who's crossing, mm -hmm. who's got a passport uh, with a name, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since they're not traveling with their own children, so you'll be told that uh, today you are uh, Sakili, what, what, and then you'll go there and then you cross with those parents. So we experienced the... the, the uh, uh, how the apartheid system yeah. uh, worked. Uh, it's a rural uh, town. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the rural areas. Even now, when I go home, I still drive on a gravel road. It's not, it's not that. So Nothing there's still little really uh, develop, uh, development. Mm -hmm. No, there's still no sports field. The sports field that uh, I grew up, I played soccer. The, uh, where I got the name shoes. I used to play oh, uh, football. Play but it's, yeah, uh, too much. But <laughs> yeah. it's, it's still the same sports yeah. field. So I played. Uh, the football, like any other boy, went to uh, rural schools. My mm -hmm. children now, yeah. they every time we speak, they say, "No, daddy, don't comment on these things because these things are not for JSS." <laughs> I went to this thing called yeah. junior secondary school, sure. so I passed the uh, standard seven, me three. Mm -hmm. So I know I was born there, and I'm, I still belong to that community. Mm -hmm. Every time it's December, you know, as uh, blacks, we go home. So I live uh, Johannesburg and go home when people take holidays to go to. Mauritius, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm a village, I go home <laughs> yeah. and, and be with my people. So it's mm -hmm. still uh, those towns where in my community, we still, uh, we don't have running water. Uh, the people, they still uh, go and fetch water from, uh, from the river. So nothing has changed, which has mm -hmm. led us to the decision that was uh, uh, taken in 2013 when uh, a clarion call was made on what, what is to be done. Yeah, and I, form part of the fighters who said, uh, if we're going to sit and complain, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be betraying our own children and generations to come because those that we trusted uh, with the political mandate of this country to transform, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not artificial, real transformation mm -hmm. of our people, they've sold out, they've stolen, they've betrayed us. So that's what led me to, to join the fighters. I was in business and uh, you know, when you, when you do business, it, mm -hmm. it has been my passion. But I realized that as uh, as you grow up, you're a father of children. Okay. You are raising girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and you know that this business that you are running, because of a country that is not transformed, 
uh, of where there's no opportunities for black business to thrive mm. because the the government of the day they can't decide on anything that protects smaller businesses mm. i realized that at some stage it's going to be that village talk that i had a business that when i died that business died with me and then i'm going to be told that no oh, these children they played with their fathers mm. A business or uh, yeah. because that's what happens because there are no systems that have been put in place there's no decisive policies that make sure that a small business which becomes the heartbeat of the economy mm -hmm. it, it survives in this country we, we're sitting with a situation where basically there's no black business in south africa if we are just being honest under the anc government you know the the apartheid government when they took over in 1948 mm -hmm. they did not waste time they took over they went to put legislation that transformed the economy from the british to the africaners mm -hmm. they still use that same legislation to exploit black people mm -hmm. but they were decisive in terms of making sure that the africana economy is going to thrive which uh, these cowards they should have done and then they failed they just went to sell out that's why we're sitting with uh, so with a black population uh, in this country uh, that is just visitors, they're not uh, participating in any economy. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I, I participated in business for the longest time of my life. I say for a fact that there's no black business. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of self-employed because when you work and you're saying you're building business, anything that you do, you want to create a legacy for your for your children to inherit, for mm -hmm. generations to inherit. As, we sit here, it's very few places, any industry you can go to, and you hear a black person and say, this was my parents' business. Mm -hmm. Everything is a startup. Even a, a sure. 60 year old person is an SMME. Mm -hmm. It's a startup because there are no uh, conducive uh, conditions and policies and yeah, systems system that have been favorable. put yeah. by the government to say, we're going to protect small businesses. Mm -hmm. We don't own anything. You can look at industries, including the industry where we consume it 100%. Mm -hmm. Chibugu, Juba, that uh, alcohol is consumed 100% by blacks, but we don't own it. We don't know who, who owns it. How can we fail even things that we consume 100%? We're a country that has got beautiful climate. If you look at KZN, Eastern Cape, Malanga, Limpopo, you've got such large forest. But we can't even do toothpicks. Uh, toothpicks, uh, it doesn't need a lot of, of science. We can't even say, okay, if you have taken everything, mm -hmm. can you allow us to have a business of toothpicks? Sure. Because we've got forest that you just cut and make. We don't have it. We are the 100% uh, uh, consumers of uh, that Toyota brand called Quantas because mm -hmm. they are used by black people. Mm -hmm. There's no participation. There's the taxi industry. They don't own quantum. The they just they, yes. They are not participating. Mm -hmm. They can't even give you to say okay. If you can't do things, maybe they are too technical of doing a steering wheel. Okay, a carpet yeah, on a quantum <laughs> to say at least carpet but is they given can have by shares, at least. shares yeah. or participation. But, so yeah. we so we decided. Uh, I decided to be mm -hmm. part of this uh, revolutionary movement to say we need real transformation. These artificial stories and pretending to be transforming our economy. It's it's selling out actually it's very painful mm -hmm. because our people they continue uh, to be subjected to poverty we still have people in this country that die from poverty related diseases which is unacceptable so mm -hmm. i when that clarion call was made i took a decision that i'm going to be part of this beautiful journey mm -hmm. that is going to transform and change the lives of people in this country pretending and uh, that we are fine it's it's not helping anyone we are mm -hmm. dying of hunger, we're dying of poverty in our country of bed. We are just like visitors, mm -hmm. while a minority that continue to exploit this country since they arrived here, even after 1994, they are still in charge. Mm -hmm. So that's why I took a decision to be part of this movement. Yeah, and you are talking about the apartheid uh, system or the legacy that, of course, has uh, suppressed the black majority, the native people of uh, South Africa and Africa uh, as a whole. Now when you started your political journey what was motivating you did you start your political career when the eff was formed where have you been before the eff no before the eff i was in business i was a businessman mm -hmm. uh, operations in case and in mm -hmm. uh, as far as northern cape mm -hmm. uh, but i knew that is not enough i knew that uh, this business is built on sand because for any business to be solid, you're going to need a, a sober government. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a supportive government. You can go anywhere 
in the world, even those that were told that they are the richest mm -hmm. in, the, in the world, is because they've got a government that supports and protects those businesses. Mm -hmm. Here you've got a government that just hates black people. So I knew that uh, this thing is not built on a, it's not built on a solid rock. It's just, uh, it's just built on set because we are working with a, 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 an environment that says to you, as long as your face is not there, it doesn't matter the brand, it doesn't matter what you have uh, built uh, mm -hmm. as an organization in that business. Mm -hmm. As long as your face is not there, uh, it, it, can't do, it can't do anything. You can come and say, we are consuming brands today that we don't know who are the manufacturers or the founders of these brands. Oh, yeah. But because they are protected by the system. But when it comes to black people, you can develop water, you can produce anything, you can be innovative and come with any product. As long as you don't have a decisive government that use legislation to protect mm -hmm. those businesses, to allow them to thrive, mm -hmm. uh, forget it, my brother. It, it, won't, it, won't, it won't go anywhere because every time you come with this brand, here in this current government of looters and criminals of the ANC, mm -hmm. but they say, yeah, we can see this is a nice brand. It can take on the Coca-Colas and McDonald's and anything of this world. Mm -hmm. But who is the owner? <laughs> we want to see the, uh, yeah. the, the founder, the manufacturer, so that mm -hmm. they can exploit you, they can destroy you. So. I said, let me go and make my participation. So uh, politically, it's the EFF where I took uh, the role of activism, uh, seriously to say, I'm not going to blame any politician because that's, that was another decision to say, I can't blame uh, the ANC people. They, they just fail because to sit at home and just continue to point fingers and don't do anything about it, you are a coward yourself mm -hmm. because if you can see they, they've, they've got no interest of servicing black people, mm -hmm. then you've got to stand up mm -hmm. uh, and, and do it for yourself and your children because that will be your legacy to say, I said back. Those that uh, took up a, a decision to go and fight mm -hmm. the apartheid system, they, mm -hmm. uh, we, we appreciate them because they took a decision. They didn't just blame apartheid. Mm -hmm. So that's why we took a decision to make sure that we're going to liberate this country and make sure that we bring economic freedom in our lifetime mm -hmm. without pointing figures. There's no time for blaming anyone. They are useless. They can't be helped. They've got no interest of this country. So to sit at home and blame them and expect miracles from them, you're going to have to liberate yourself and it starts with you. So I knew that it started with me. So that's why I had to be, I had to form part of the organization mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and do, it for, uh, do it for myself to say, I'm going to get involved. I'm not going to point any finger to anyone. Mm -hmm. Are you still in business and what kind of business are you in? Yeah, I'm still in business. My business is still operating. I got business in, 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 in Johannesburg. I still run here in, uh, in KZN. But you want them to you remember they uh, came to, to threaten us, these people. <laughs> uh, I run yeah. a transport uh, company. Okay. I run a yellow metal mm -hmm. uh, com uh, company. They, they, still, they, they, are st they are still there. Mm -hmm. They tried to threaten me even at that time. So if you do this, the ANC will close all the business. I told them that if it's their business, let them close it. Because I'm not going to live on my knees. Uh, uh, because being threatened by other boys and girls because they think they run state power. So we are still, we are still, we are still operating uh, and, uh, and also still focused on doing the work of the year. Mm -hmm. So the ANC is big on threatening black businesses or closing the doors of those who are trying to, to rise above the suffering. Yeah, if you don't want uh, uh, to be their stooge, and then they exploit you and they tell you all the rubbish, then uh, then you must know they're going to vicious and making sure that uh, they're going to uh, destroy those businesses. They've done a lot, a lot of aspiring and potential uh, black businesses. If you look at, uh, you can go to the oil industry. If you look at uh, people that are involved in transport, because I was involved, I'm involved in, in transport, so I know. If you go to the oil industry now, if you look at those tankers that are transporting fuel between different filling stations in this country, you go to them, not even 5% is black people. Mm. So either it's Indians, it's white, and the person who make policies in this country is a black government. They make sure that they close them, they bankrupt uh, black people. ANC just hates black people. They don't want to see any black person uh, uh, to strive, but they do that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why even with education, they've got no interest of education in this country because mm -hmm. they want to create a situation where you are dependent on them so that they can exploit you for your vote. So the more black people, they remain poor and dependent on the state. Mm -hmm. It works better for the ANC. So that is why anything that seems to have some independence and can think out of, uh, uh, of the ANC and not depend on government, 
it becomes uh, its enemy, especially mm -hmm. when it looks black. So it, it is uh, within their mandate to make sure that keep them uh, poor, keep them uneducated, keep them dependent on you so that you can uh, uh, blackmail them through social grants and everything else. They must always be dependent so that you can use that mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, uh, to exploit them and then you demand votes in return. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've, they've done that. There's a long list of people that even during apartheid uh, in our townships, mm -hmm. we grew up, there were shops uh, in the villages. There were, there were shops that were 100% all black, started uh, during the apartheid times when it was difficult, not even allowed to have uh, permits. Uh, because permits, black people, they accepted, pay, they got permits at a very late stage uh, to even to be in the trading business. It was mm -hmm. given to whites and it was Indians, but blacks, it was very late where you were given a permit to have what you call a general dealer in the villages. Mm -hmm. We grew up, uh, where our parents used to send us to those general dealers to go and ask uh, for either for food or money to go to school, anything. All those general dealers go, uh, almost the entire country, they closed. Mm -hmm. So what happened to black people who knew how to run businesses? Go to our township, black owned. All you see now, it's the same name that a uh, family used to run this uh, small shopping center in last, but mm -hmm. all of them, they, uh, they are gone mm -hmm. because this current government made it their mission that destroy these things so that everyone, they must join the line of being poor and uh, they must be exploited mm -hmm. through social grants so that yeah. they continue depending on you. So mm -hmm. they, it, it, it's part of, their issue, and that is why you've got an economy that is not growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't grow any economy if you're not going to have that part of sector uh, contributing to employment and making sure that there's economic growth in this country. They close everything. Look at the textile industry closed. Mm -hmm. Everything that blacks who could, uh, could yeah uh, could participate, it has it has been closed. Uh, if you go to those that are trying, even in the agriculture industry, mm -hmm. trying to be farmers, mm -hmm. and we. We get stories, uh, nonsensical stories to say, no, mm -hmm. you know, this guy was given a farm and then he failed mm -hmm. uh, to produce. But previously, this farm was owned by a white man uh, who this farm was uh, very successful. Uh, this white guy was running this farm until he was given to a black person. But the question that they're not asking, mm -hmm. did this black person when he was given a farm, given an opportunity and a space where he can go and, 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 and sell in the market? Mm -hmm. Because you can do any business, you can be so much innovative uh, and, and have the best product as long as you don't have shelf space mm -hmm. to go and sell that product, that business is going to close. Mm -hmm. So farmers now, black farmers, if you look at the products here in KZN, mm -hmm. you go to as far as my village, there you've got a shop right. When you ask them where to get potatoes, uh, which uh, we've got people who've got farms in Mzimkulu can do potatoes mm -hmm. and sell to Spa and ShopRite and everywhere else. No, it's coming from a white farmer mm -hmm. in Free State. Mm -hmm. Until you go to Free State and say, you know what, I want to develop and grow bigger, let me buy this white farm. Mm -hmm. The day you buy that farm mm -hmm. and produce the same potatoes, same quality, everything, mm -hmm. uh, the, the white man who's in control of the system won't allow you oh. to give you that same shell space where in ShopRite pick and pay or boxer. What's going to happen with that farm is going to close. Then it becomes That's why they paint black people, b black people's businesses as, as fail. Yeah, know. because you don't have a government that is there to to protect. Mm -hmm. You go to these main uh, retail shops; they got over twelve thousand products mm -hmm. there. Nothing is coming from blacks. That's why I'm saying, even those that have got capacity to say we can take them head on, as long as you don't have shell space, mm -hmm. forget there, there's nothing. But uh, for you to have that. You need a decisive government that is going to call them and say, this shell space, it must be given to these uh, growing businesses and we want to protect. Uh, mm -hmm. You can talk of any other brand. Toyota, it is what it is today because that, the Japanese government decided that this is our brand, we're going to protect it. It doesn't matter how many years. Mm -hmm. Today, there's no country that doesn't have, uh, uh, that is, that is, doesn't, doesn't have Toyota. So yeah. you, you need business. Otherwise, mm -hmm. black people, they're going to work, they're going to get tired and people, they're going to think, this thing has got to do with, with, the, with, with just being born black, so you can't do it. No, you need a decisive government. Yeah. And that's it, the government that we intend to put as the EFF that is going to make sure that it allows its people to stand on their own. Yeah. That is not a business that victimizes and blackmail. Let people stand on their own, let them mm -hmm. survive, let the government make sure that the, the people are, 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 are protected. But also you've got state 
Yeah. The state is the biggest buyer of food, is the biggest buyer of almost everything. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. even there, there's still no participation. Yeah. It's just exploitation and fronting mm -hmm. and everything else, and people are pretending to work. Yeah. So the EFF, we don't want to pretend. We want to create a socialist state mm -hmm. that is going to make sure that uh, people of this country, they're in control mm -hmm. of the resources. But they are still allowed to survive and live. Mm -hmm. So given those uh, neoliberal policies or conditions, as a black uh, uh, businessman, how were you able to penetrate into the market, given this dynamics? No, it was difficult, but uh, we, uh, you got to know what you're doing. There's a lot of black people who went to study. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. they, Did you have they, any political they, connections? They, no, it didn't need political connections. I didn't have political connections. Mm -hmm. That's why even when they came with those threats that, yeah, if you are part of the EFF, we're going to cancel a contract, I said, go ahead. Mm -hmm. They canceled them I, because I didn't need them. I was not given by them. And I said, if this is yours, you can, you can take it. So there's a lot of black people who want to participate, mm -hmm. as long as they've got a state that can respect them, that can make sure that it creates a, a proper uh, playing fields and uh, mm -hmm. with clear uh, government that protects their, their, their business and, and, and not allow them to be exploited by politicians. So mm -hmm. we've got uh, professionals, we've got people who have studied, others have been working for the same industry, same uh, white owned industries. They've mm -hmm. got black managers who know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just that you need a decisive government that is conducive, that is going to allow its people to participate in a conducive environment. Mm -hmm. And then they must be able to grow and look after their families. Mm -hmm. South Africa has got that potential. You just need decisive leadership that is not going to be uh, pretending and playing games, trying to please uh, minorities yeah. at the expense of the majority blacks in this country. Mm -hmm. Were you not deterred, given that KZN is characterized uh, by violence? Uh, you can look back in the apartheid days. Uh, the IFP uh, has also been known of uh, a pro-Zulu party, and obviously tribalism has, it's, it's been, has been at the center of it. Now, when you joined politics, despite the political killings, were you not scared of your life? Were you not scared of your family? No, I, I was born here. Mm -hmm. I was raised here. So, and there's no one who's going to monopoly of violence. No one. Uh, either you're an organized formation, as a political party, or individuals, no one has got monopoly of violence. And no one uh, must ever think that uh, because they can be violent. So it means people, they're not going to fulfill their ambitions and their dreams. So that, it didn't bother me anyway. By the way, I'm part of a movement that uh, that it's politics by nature. It's a loving organization, the EFF. We, mm -hmm. It's even in our constitution that we must love one another. It's a mm -hmm. peaceful organization. It's a non-racist organization. It's a non-tribalist organization. It's a non-sexist organization. Mm -hmm. So it's a peaceful organization. And uh, when we say we are loving, unconditional. Sure, yeah. When we are saying we are not racist, unconditional. When we say we are not sexist, mm -hmm. unconditional. But when it comes to peace, we are conditional, we are only peaceful to those who are peaceful to us. So uh, that's what I love about this organization, mm -hmm. that I can't give you peace and then you respond with violence. And then I must still take the responsibility of being peaceful. Mm -hmm. So if you want to bring the violence as a way of creating a, a lifestyle or an environment, or you want to run things in your province, then you must know that you're going to respond with violence. So that didn't bother, it still doesn't bother me. Even today, uh, we're here in KZN, I go home in December, there's no time where I don't go. I still do exactly what I used to do when I was still uh, running my business. That in December, I go home. I still go home. I walk the streets of KZN. Uh, so people who think they can uh, threaten and use violence mm -hmm. as a way of, of, of leading people, mm -hmm. uh, it's not sustainable. There's no one who's got uh, uh, that monopoly. Mm -hmm. All of us who must be allowed to have our views mm -hmm. and, uh, and live the life that we choose to live. So. They, they can't be threat of violence. Yes, yeah. there's political killings, the government, uh, it has failed to, to, to deal with them, especially here in KZN, but it's just lack of leadership. Because you, you sit here in the province, you've got more guns in civilians' hands uh, uh, than the police. Some of the police stations, I think they're even protected by private security now. It's a police is protected by private security because you've got a, a government of cowards. Uh, once the EFF takes over this country, you will see these uh, nonsensical guns that are in the hands of civilians that continue to terrorize our communities will come to an end because there's no one who's going to terrorize uh, this country uh, using violence, guns or anything else 
when you've got a state machinery that must respond decisively uh, on those. Our people, they must be allowed to live freely. Uh, our children, they must walk the street freely. Our women, they must walk these streets freely 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Not to be scared that uh, during this time, so women can't be out in the street, uh, or children can't be out on the street. When you've got a state that has got a responsibility of protecting all of us. So the issue of violence it must never even be used. Of, uh, it must not even be accepted as a way of suppressing uh, political decisions or people's participation mm -hmm. in politics yeah. in, 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 in case that uh, no one has got that monopoly, either mm -hmm. IFP, ANC or anyone else. Yeah. You will bring violence or respond to violence, case closed. Mm -hmm. And the murder trial of uh, the late uh, Cindy uh, uh, Magata is back in the uh, Peter Morris back um, High Court. Um, what do you do? You see justice uh, playing out in that uh, front? Look, the, that was a it was a sad case of uh, Comrade Cindy. So we know we, we we grew up together. By the way, we are even related. A mother is Lamin Wasemas. So it's not just a person that I, I got to know in the street. We are, we are related. She has born of uh, his mother. It's a it's a, it's a Lamin mm -hmm. So. It's sad because there's still no justice there. Uh, and uh, with the current uh, ANC government, how it deals with serious cases, I don't see any hope. But uh, this family must rest assured because we're going to take over this country and those that committed that crime mm -hmm. uh, against him, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, uh, they, will, they, they will meet their day. Justice will be saved uh, because under the ANC government, we know it's not going to happen. I mean, he was a prominent ANC leader. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, you know, he was just killed like many of them that gets killed and nothing happens. Just think of ordinary civilians that are not even prominent uh, leaders of society. They just get killed like flies and nothing happens. Their cases are not taken anywhere. So it shouldn't just be about Mark Arthur because he was prominent. Mm -hmm. It's about every South African that there must be justice uh, uh, and you must have Mm -hmm. the state that will say it will protect you. So so it, it was a sad case. I, I don't have any hope, mm -hmm. but uh, the hope is that in three months' time, we're going to have a new government. So those that were involved, uh, we're going to hand them down and make sure that there's justice for Cindy so and every South African that has been killed. We are in a country where every year, close mm -hmm. to tw about 27,000 people get killed in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, bigger than the numbers of what is happening in in Russia and Ukraine, where there are two countries yeah. uh, declared that we are going to a, a war. In South Africa, there's no war, mm -hmm. but uh, 27,000 people, they get killed every year. Mm -hmm. And you say you've got a minister of police, you've got, uh, uh, you've got minister of justice, there's no one who gets sentenced. Mm -hmm. We are even told now that even the people that are killing, these people that are already serving uh, sentences of murder, so they get released over the weekend to continue with their work of just be uh, in garb and continue to kill and make money by uh, killing our people. So all that nonsense, mm -hmm. uh, it has to come to an end and, we, and we'll see to it that it happens. So you need, you need a decisive government that is not going to play games. Mm -hmm. This one has been infiltrated by criminals, mm -hmm. gangsters and uh, everyone else that run police station. If you go to a police station, you know that if you're going to report a case about this certain feared uh, criminal in a, in a community police, they won't do anything. Because even police, they drink in his tavern, they sleep in his, uh, in his back rooms. They rent in the house of a criminal. So how we, the same police that go and rent in a, in a backyard of a criminal, they're going to arrest the same criminal. So you need that, you need uh, proper policy. And uh, the police themselves, they must be looked after, know themselves that they can go and do the work because they know that they've got a state and leadership that can protect them. Because some of them, they are honest police, they want to do the work, yes, but yes. they are vulnerable oh, because yes, they've got yes. families. So even when they report to their, mm -hmm. their leadership to say, we want to take on to the case, but ourselves, who are exposed, we need uh, this kind of uh, protection, we need this kind of uh, support from the upper structures of the police, the police themselves, mm -hmm. men and women, they remain vulnerable uh, in those villages where sometimes they've got a police station, there are no cars, there's nothing. So it's work that needs to be, uh, needs a proper leadership that can mm -hmm. come and deal with it. But yeah. crime in South Africa, it can be, it can be reduced uh, with, with speed. You just need leadership, you can do mm -hmm. that. Is it true that uh, at Umzimkul or in Umzimkul, uh, there are a lot of uh, incubis? And if that is anything to go by, what do you think should be the role of uh, the police 
Because if we know that Umzim Kul, they are in Gabis, why don't we go and arrest them? No, it's true. Uh, I think uh, after I'm saying that, uh, Umzim Kul is number two. Oh, okay. Where you get, uh, you, where you get, uh, where you get Gabis. But that's what I'm saying. They are there because they know that there's no government. Mm. They are there. It's small boys that some of them we know. So, but this one, uh, even when they say to you, no, look like this one is in government. This one I grew up with. Uh, this one was a coward even when we were small boys there mm. doing stick fighting and everything. He was just, when did he get to a stage now that uh, I'm told that he's in government? Some of them will say, well, what told that you are part of this government operation? Says, ah, they are lying. So, I knew we, we knew you could, but. That can happen when you don't have government. Remember, when there's no authority, when there's no leadership, it becomes chaos. Even fools and the chance takers, they go and do as they please. Uh, if there's, there's no authority, like a home where there are no parents, there's no authority, anyone can just go and do what they, 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 they want to do. So we need this country to have authority. We need authority back. We need leadership back that is not going to uh, play games. So this thing of Gabi's, it shouldn't. Uh, 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 APN issue shouldn't be even a topic in South Africa. We just need authority and then finish uh, those things because anyone who declares himself as a Gabi and uh, uses guns to terrorize our communities, he must be met with a gun. He must know, we must not even waste time with that person because he has declared that the lives of our people, they're going to be in his hands. So why should we allow that person to still, still continue to live like a, a proper civilian? No longer a civilian, that person. Mm -hmm. is an enemy of the people and enemy must be flushed out of the system permanently. So yeah. the stories of Gabi's, it shouldn't be even a, a discussion. Yeah. South Africa, that we've got a problem of Gabi's, even international communities, they think it's an organized arrangement. Yeah. No, it's just that there's, there's lack of leadership, there's no authority in this country. Anyone does as he pleases. That's why others, they go and shoot at each other at the tavern. It's not Gabi, it's just clowns and fools and drunkards who We've got too much guns around them because there's no authority. There are too many guns mm. in civilian hands. Even uh, Rangats, some would take uh, even Yaupe, they've got, they've got guns. So they just move around shooting mm -hmm. at random people and then they terrorize uh, communities and call themselves mm -hmm. It's a small place. Yeah. Majority of them who are cowards, we know yeah. that. So, so SG, the EFF is not only going to usher in economic freedom. Of course, it's going to uh, uh, restore law and, law and order in South Africa. Definitely. We, they, they can't be thriving, they can't be any thriving economy in an in a, in a environment that is not conducive, mm -hmm. in, a, in a lawless uh, society, mm -hmm. in, a, in a country where there's no authority. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Because for you to have that economy to thrive so that people, they can get jobs, mm -hmm. factories, industries, they can be able to operate. Mm -hmm. You're going to need order. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the bigger economies, you go to China, you go to America, you go to Russia, you mm -hmm. go... There's order there uh, with over a billion people in China, but there's order there. So, in the absence of that order, mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, that economy, it doesn't matter how beautiful the ideas are mm -hmm. and the policies, mm -hmm. the, the, it, it won't thrive. So, uh, that uh, delivering and ushering of economic freedom in our lifetime, it goes hand to hand that there must be authority, there must be order, uh, there must be systems, there must be a way how we're going to conduct ourselves starting from the youngest to the oldest civilian uh, in, in, in this country. So the order and authority is going to be uh, part of the day. People, they must know what the, once we take over uh, this year, they, they're going to change. That's why I'm saying those ones who call them cabbies, gangsters, drug laws who terrorize our family, they're going to, we'll have to start with them so that we can first organize society. There must be order. People, they must be free to do everything. We've got people who are scared now. They can't even do anything. In, for a business and you could try to do this, someone comes and say, no, you must pay protection fee to who? Who are you? And uh, those people, they are allowed to live. They are even known uh, by the state that, no, this one is a, is a big shot in this area. What does it do? No, it collects protection fees. That's exploitation for people that are supposed to have a state that is, is protecting them. There won't be anyone who's got the responsibility of any protection fee. The state will protect our people, will take down all these high walls that, uh, that has made us not to see our beautiful country and enjoy the views and the, and the climate of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of the beautiful climate of this country. So SG, now I want us to touch on the politics of the EFF. In 2023, last year, the CCT 
uh, has adopted the Road to Victory uh, manual, uh, which is comprised of, of course, the uh, Maishome, Mamela, and Telatupa uh, faces. Uh, if you can just, you know, break it down for us, uh, how each face entails and uh, how does it position the EFF, where it comes from, where it is now, and uh, in terms of its future? Well, we adopted the, the Road to Victory Manual mm -hmm. in September last year, where we had an uh, in, in, um, uh, elections workshop mm -hmm. uh, led uh, from the CCT, mm -hmm. uh, led by the President, the Commander-in-Chief, and all structures of the EFF. Mm -hmm. uh, all regions were there, all provinces were there. And we adopted that uh, Road to Victory Manual, as you said, it's got different phases, by Thome, Mamela, and Tsilachupa phase. Mm -hmm. Thome phase, that's where we are it's building of uh, the structures of the EFF that are going to be the foot soldiers, the ground forces that are going to lead the campaign, that are going to be the ambassador, the one that is going to send a message mm -hmm. do door to door in, uh, in the entire country running the election mm -hmm. machinery. So uh, those uh, phases, they start from a uh, VD level, where we've got uh, voting district election task forces, mm -hmm. then we've got branch election task forces, sub-regional election task forces, uh, regional election task forces, provincial election task forces, up to the central election task force, which is comprised of CCT and provincial leaders. So all this battalion is the one that we have to go and and make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's properly organized mm -hmm. at a VD level, where okay. each and every uh, VD has got a battalion of 20 solid, sober ground forces, politically uh, trained, uh, who understand the politics of the EFF, what the EFF stands for, but who are activists mm -hmm. within their communities that interact with their communities because they are the ones who are going to be carrying the whole election campaign up until the day of voting. So we have, we have to establish all those structures mm -hmm. in the entire country. And we can say now, they've uh, verified all registered to vote. We've got over 580,000 solid battalion mm -hmm. of the EFF. That mm -hmm. is going to be the campaign uh, mm -hmm. soldiers mm -hmm. uh, for these 2024 elections. They are on the ground. All of them, they've been verified. They are in their voting station. So there's no visit. There's okay. no one who's uh, coming from this VT, but working on a different VT because mm -hmm. in the EFF when we work, we pay attention to detail, we're very thorough and we want honest uh, mm -hmm. people, we want people who just don't like moving around, work in your own area. If you're an activist coming from a VD, uh, go and work in your own VD because for our people to trust any regional leader, uh, or provincial leader or even a national leader, they must know that there's an EFF in their own communities who stays there, who is with them, so that they can be serviced. Because we have come to accept that mm -hmm. these things of uh, tourism, and you call yourself leaders, where people, they don't re reside in the mm -hmm. areas where our communities are affected, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes a problem. And yeah. we're not going to allow that when, with leadership. We have to uh, make sure that it's the structures themselves that go and speak to our people, so that our people can have confidence that now that uh, this fighter in my VD, in my village, uh, in my township is one that uh, that persuaded me to vote for EFF, so that if there are challenges, I know where to report to. I don't have to be calling some hotline. Mm -hmm. Here is a fighter next door. Is the one I'm going to say to him, fighter. We voted for your organization. Here are the issues that we have in our communities, mm -hmm. and there must be a rapid response in terms of resolving our community community issues so we are a mass-based organization as it's allowed on our founding manifesto and that's the approach of uh, the my mm -hmm. uh, my phase we went to the masses we went to the vds that's why we've got those, that solid machinery on all the twenty-three thousand voting uh, district in this country mm -hmm. so that has been done uh, all uh, the four thousand three hundred watts we've got structures that themselves mm -hmm. They are not supervisors, they are working on the ground, they're going to be participating in the door-to-door -door campaign, resolving uh, community issues now. Mm -hmm. we, don't, uh, we don't want activists to wait until elections there that they can't resolve. Even a simple thing that can happen in their own communities, if there's an issue of an ID, that thing doesn't need, uh, it doesn't have to wait for elections. Just go and resolve the issues of ITs in our community. So that's a kind and the type and the characters of the ground forces that we have now in the in the in, in these structures. And the, and, and we are very happy because when that uh, 
victory manual was adopted and a, a line of march was sent to all the members of the EFF, all of them as an, a, a solid and organized uh, movement uh, that, uh, uh, that is, is, is decisive in terms of its decision mm -hmm. and implementation of its own programs. Mm -hmm. All the fighters, they responded positively. The commander-in-chief has went himself to go and verify, not to be told stories, yeah. to go and uh, visit uh, these fighters mm -hmm. uh, when we, last year he was doing rounds in oh, the yeah, entire yeah. country on the uh, Provincial Ground Forces Forum. Yes. Because he himself, we, he doesn't work with papers on data, we want one bodies. So he's seen them, he went to all provinces to say, yes. as a commander-in-chief, as a leader of this mm -hmm. uh, battalion, let me go and verify what I'm leading, mm -hmm. so that I don't sit here mm -hmm. and think I'm leading something only to find out that I'm leading collection of documents and papers. So we are not about collection of any document and all the fighters, they know that mandate, that this time around, we don't need, uh, we don't need your papers and documents and reports, we want warm bodies because it's only warm bodies that will deliver services mm -hmm. for our people. It's only warm bodies, real people that can fix water problems, can fix sewer problems, can build roads, can make sure that there's uh, a safe environment for our people to live, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that uh, the, uh, everything else that we seek to achieve on what will be delivered by on the People's Manifesto, mm -hmm. it will need warm bodies. And we start uh, that now on this process of the myeloma phase, the mamela phase, it's going to incorporate programs where now we're starting to do the door-to-door -door, uh, phases mm -hmm. after this manifesto Yeah, mm -hmm. Once the president leaves the stage on the 10th of uh, February, Isugi, Mm -hmm. All this uh, over 500,000 uh, battalion, they're going to the ground. They know which is so really they're going to be on that ground until a new directive from Winnie the House has been issued that now you can withdraw from the ground, go home. Until that directive has not been issued, all the fighters are going to remain permanently on the ground. Not uh, one hour, not when you are bored or you got time, permanently on the ground, 24 hours with our people speaking to them, explaining the People's Manifesto, item by item, what do we stand for, what do we seek to achieve, how we're going to transform this country, how we're going to create jobs, what are the issues that we're going to be detailed in that People's Manifesto that the Commander-in-Chief will come and unveil here in uh, Moses Mapita. So we are at that stage, and then the last stage will be the uh, Telatupa stage, where we go for total onslaught. We're turning the whole country red. Every corner of this country, it must be turned red. Uh, uh, through our campaign, mm -hmm. uh, 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 a campaign that, uh, as President has explained, when he was training and inducting those ground forces that were going to run, the most dignified campaign, a uh, peaceful campaign, mm -hmm. going to speak to our people and make sure that uh, they, we respect our people. We ask for a permission to speak to them. We, we, we're not entitled mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. speak to our people. We go in a respectful manner. We ask for a permission to speak to them. Mm -hmm. We explain the EFS manifesto. Our people, they'll be allowed to, uh, we won't interfere with other political parties mm -hmm. when they go and sell whatever that they want to sell or speak to our people. We just go and do our part mm -hmm. in a respectful manner because at the end of the day, our people, they must be allowed, no one, we're not going to be imposing or forcing ourselves into any community. If someone says, no, I want to vote for this uh, party, we're going to accept that and move because we're going to run a dignified, respectful and organized campaign and is going to be led by our Crown Forces on the ground. Mm -hmm. All of them, they've been trained, they are inducted, and it's going to be continuous, not a once-off. The leadership, as they are presiding over those structures, it's going to be, we're going to do it continuously to make sure that when we do door-to-door -door after the manifesto has been launched, go to our people's houses in a respectful manner, a manner that you must be well presented, you must be clean so that our people, they know, just just a, a sign of respect. Don't go to our people's uh, smelling of drug, of alcohol, smelling of cigarette, just respect our community. So the EFF is going to be running the most dignified, clean and respectful campaign. So as we enter people's houses, mm -hmm. I can tell you now that there's no house where we're going to enter with arrogance mm -hmm. and, uh, and entitlement. Yeah. As uh, these ones that are leading us, that they think they're entitled to our bodies and our homes. They just going open, no, it can't be the campaign. It's not part of what is on the victory manual. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be the phase. So the last phase, Salatupa phase, we are visiting communities, uh, influential leaders, organized formations, 
NGOs, NPOs, all yeah. other mass based movement groups, community groups, going to be speaking to all of them because yeah. we are saying we're going to speak to every South African about our manifesto. Uh, one thing that we do in the EFF, we are fearless. We are not scared mm -hmm. of putting our story, whether you accept it or not. But one thing we are done is that when we leave you, you know what we stand for. So there's no confusion, there's no blackmail, there's no threatening of mm -hmm. any vote of South African that vote for us or else. No, 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 we're going to come and present our manifesto, which we know that is going to be the best manifesto out of, of course. all this rubbish that is going to be presented. Uh, we, pre we, we, we pride ourselves on superior logic and uh, we've been tested several times. Sure. Everything else that we put, yeah. it, it, it comes, uh, it's, it's scientific. You, you know that uh -huh. there was a thought process, there's leadership, there's science yeah. on this thing. It can be done. It's not some far-fetched yeah. dream that it cannot be implemented. Yeah, true to its character, the EFF is tried and tested together with its uh, leadership. Now, the EFF is the third uh, largest party in South Africa, SG, and uh, it's going to be the first, by the way, of uh, uh, amongst the other three. Uh, between the uh, DA and, of course, uh, the ANC, we're going to launch our manifesto first. Do you think the ANC and the DA somehow they just want to be copycats? They are just waiting for the EFF to go up first and deliver yeah. superior logic so that they can copy. No, it's true. We were well, leading this country. The the ANC is not just uh, it's not even a speculation. They even went as far as even following us to Moses Mapidi Stadium. So. so they just not want to copy, they want to even copy the stadium. They, I'm sure even the stage set up and everything and everything else that we're going to do because they've accepted that mm -hmm. we are the leader of society uh, in three months' time, this thing is going to change. So that's why they are waiting. I'm sure they don't have a manifesto as we speak. Uh, Balula and his team, they are waiting there with the, with the typewriters and everything else that the day we finish launching and failing our manifesto, <laughs> they're just going to remove uh, uh, the the lock of the organization and everything else and then they just put yeah. their own look. We know they can't think. If if the capacity of thinking wouldn't be in this mess 30 years later when they're in government, they, they've got no capacity of thinking. Sometimes they try to think and they don't finish thinking. That's why they can start a project. Along the way they stop. You can see that these people, they did not finish thinking. They were trying, but they did not finish. They got tired. So they, it's true. They are, they are waiting uh, on the on the EF manifesto. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So long an assumption of speculation. The ANC, we know, that's what they are waiting for. That's why even they had to follow us to come to the same stadium. For the first time in the elections of this country, they are waiting on us, the IFP, it's the same story. They are waiting on us. The IFP is coming to this stadium as well because they had to lead, wait for the leader of society to announce. So only when the president announced in Peter Marisbeck in the KZN Grand Forces Forum mm -hmm. to say this is where we are going, that's the only time the ANC had to meet their leadership and the IFP uh, and, and, the, and the TA. I'm sure if TA had capacity, mm -hmm. they would be coming here, but they don't have capacity. They are not a mass based organization. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an organization of, the, of racist minorities. Yeah. So they would be coming mm -hmm. here. Uh, maybe they're going to look somewhere in case KZN, but mm -hmm. we know that they are waiting to hear the superior logic on what the EFF has done. Mm -hmm. We have seen some of them, even the new. Uh, small formations. That, <laughs> Patriotic uh, allies. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, uh, chance takers. <laughs> they tried. It, yeah. uh, they're waiting for the EFF. Mm -hmm. And we've seen even some of these new organizations that are starting up. Mm -hmm. they, the way they cope, they even copy the non-negotiable cardinal pillars. They go and put them there and say, yeah, this is our, this is our document. So don't be surprised when you see the copy of uh, the EFF manifesto in the ANC in the TA document and everyone else, Mashaba, PA, mm. all of them, they're just waiting what leadership is going to say on the 10th of uh, February. And yeah. uh, South Africans must be guaranteed leadership will speak on the 10th of February on what's going to happen in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, we have never been scared of uh, stating what we stand for and uh, to give direction yeah. in this country. And no policy of the EFF has been. Uh, anyone who has come and say, this is the wrong policy. Everyone else, they just, it's character assassination and this and this. But when it comes yep. to our policies, they are tested and no one, no sober South African mm -hmm. has said this policy, it, it, it won't work. They are progressive policies yeah. that make sure that we're going to usher proper socialist government that uh, the means of production, they're going to be the hands of our, in the hands of mm -hmm. our people. Mm -hmm. When we look at the provincial breakdown of uh, registered voters, uh, in the top five is Gauteng, uh, followed by KZ and uh, uh, Eastern Cape, Eastern Cape, Cape yeah. Yeah, yeah, in Limpopo and uh, Mpumalang. Amongst these five, would 
would you say the EFF is scanning to, or are we likely to see uh, the EFF having an outright majority in one of these provinces? Look, the way we, we are structured, we have, we have built this organization ground up. Mm -hmm. That's why even in our constitution, the basic unit mm -hmm. of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of these organizations are branches. So we have built it ground up. We remember that uh, 2022, mm -hmm. it was a year uh, where it was a year of the branch, it was a year of uh, oh, yeah. mass uh, recruitment, where yes, we recruited million. over 1 million mm -hmm. registered voters, mm -hmm. registered members, all of them. That 1 million was audited. So we've got that battalion of 1 million on the ground mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So in each and every, uh, in each and every VD, that's why in the, our, uh, road to victory manual. Mm -hmm. If you look at the structures at a VD level, there's no VD that we say, okay, this one is in the Northern Cape, so we're not interested. So mm -hmm. just have five fighters who are a VD ETF, then we're interested in Pumala, then mm -hmm. have 20 fighters, all of them. Because South Africa too, the EFF is important from Cape to Mosin. There's no corner of South Africa that is a priority and this one is a less priority. So we're going for everything, Western Cape, We've got structures all the way to Central Karoo because they might be a small community, but they are a community, and uh, they 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 got a special place in the in in the EFF as an organization. So we are we are balanced in in, in that way. So we are going for everything. Mm -hmm. So there's no area of priority that no we are looking at Pumala and case No 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 no. Because once you start thinking like that, mm -hmm. it means we have taken a decision that they are better South Africans as compared to the others. The whole country were going for it, uh, flat-footed the entire organization. That is why the president has been in the entire country. Mm -hmm. Just when we launched these uh, elections, uh, uh, when after once we adopted the the, the road to victory manual, mm -hmm. he is the, is the first one to move all over the country to demonstrate that there is no area of priority. We want the, to liberate the people of South Africa. We want to make sure that for mm -hmm. once. After so many years of uh, oppression, so many years of uh, exploitation of black people, this country must be finally a, libera a liberated zone. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's why so then we, there's no area of priority. All provinces are a priority in the EFF. That's why we're here in case at end, to demonstrate that, that we, we exist everywhere and we mm. care about people of South Africa in all corners of the country. So each and every VD, mm -hmm. village, township, everything else. Yeah. Once you are a South African, you must know that you've got a special place in the, in, mm -hmm. the, in the EFF as an organization and that your needs, your aspirations and your dreams, they must make sure that there's a conducive environment to make sure that you, you thrive and you can build a, a successful future for you and your own children. So we are, we are everywhere. There's no, there's no priority. We're guarding for everything. We want total victory and we will get total victory. Absolutely. And KZN uh, is going to be one of the provinces that are going to be hotly contested. Now, there is a new party launched by the former uh, uh, president, uh, Jacob Zuma, MK. Should we be worried about MK as the EFF? No, 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 no. We, should, we shouldn't be worried. Uh, every South African, uh, as per, as in, 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 in our constitution, every South African has got a right to uh, for in, for political affiliation. Mm -hmm. Has got a right to vote. Anyone has got the right to assemble. Has got the right to do. It's, it's in the constitution. So, mm -hmm. the MK Congress they've got a right to start their own organisation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't worry us or bother us uh, like any other organisation that has been started by anyone, mm -hmm. because we don't we don't uh, we, we we don't work with miracles. The EFF is not uh, founded on miracles founded on proper groundwork, uh, scientific work that we sit and make assessment and we know what needs to be done and what we need to do. So the, 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 there's nothing in case that an MK can be here. We're not going to contest this hoping for a miracle. We know where are the structures. We know all the 901 words of KZN. We've mm -hmm. got uh, VD structures on all uh, the voting districts mm -hmm. of, uh, of KZN, in every village, in townships, everywhere else, in the suburbs, everywhere mm -hmm. of KZN. So we're not uh, bothered by MK. Let MK exist like any other parties do what they do. The EFF were focusing on the mandate of the EFF, the directives of the leadership, the manifesto that we're going to unveil in this stadium. That is going to be our campaign to 
even after the manifest, once we've launched it, mm -hmm. the crown forces of the EFF, they, that's the only Bible they're going to use. It's a manifesto because at the end of the day, our people, uh, they've been lied to, they've been told a lot of stories. Now, uh, the voters themselves, they, they want to hear what this party is going to offer. So we're not going to offer music and uh, drums and, uh, uh, and parties. Uh, no, no, no. Our people, they want a clear policies on what this organization is going to do, what it is going to implement. That is going to be the decider of yeah. these elections. Because our people, they've seen that even these ones that come and lie to us, uh, give us food parcels and all these things, they, they've not translated into anything. And we are grateful of the voters, voters of South Africa because they've, uh, they've woken up, they've seen that people, they come and steal government money and give us food parcels once and then they disappear after five years there's no development there's nothing uh, there's no progress in, uh, in in our communities there's absolutely nothing that happens we remain uh, exploited excluded and in poverty so this one is going to be decided decided on the hard work that you do on the ground the manifesto that you're going to present anything else it's a show of which we're not interested on so any party can uh, it must be allowed uh, to yeah. exist it's our constitution the democracy that we live in. 32 million rand has been stolen from, um, allegedly has been stolen from the uh, Zululand the district municipality here in uh, KZN and, and we understand that municipality is led by IFP and of course the EFF has taken action, the EFF uh, deputy president led a delegation there to, uh, to conduct an oversight. What is the EFF position on? Look, uh, the, the deputy president is head of governance. Uh, and, and as a deployer of KZN, he has led us uh, decisively to go to that municipality. Just to demonstrate to you that we are a fearless organization. Uh, someone was going to say, no, hey, political uh, history says IFP, they are violent, so you can't take them to task. No, we are taking them to task. Yeah. That's why the temporary yeah. president went there to, see, to say to the mayor city and give an explanation, which uh, they've tried to give that explanation and uh, that matter of following up uh, to understand how 32 million of the people of that region uh, went to uh, four, four or five companies mm -hmm. and we've listed those companies because we're not scared of anyone. That's why we've publicly listed the names of those companies to say these ones are thieves, they must be looked after, they, uh, they must, they, we must make sure that all South Africans, including those that are in government, make sure that these companies, they must never get to work of government because they are involved in criminality and stealing the, the, the money of people of South Africa and uh, everyone who was involved from the IFP management and leadership we're going to see that case up until uh, there are consequences mm -hmm. and, uh, and every little sign that has been stolen we're happy that uh, it was picked up quickly because mm -hmm. some of the money went back to the account of the municipality uh, it was picked up quickly mm -hmm. and even the fighters from that region who, uh, who are councillors and everyone else to make sure when they see this issue they take it up and make sure that they, they inform leadership we speak about it mm -hmm. and we take on those that are presiding over that municipality head on to make sure we want accountability mm -hmm. we have brought in that mayor like a small boy to say city you are not just some uh, a village chief you are a public representative you represent our people this is our money you're going to take us through each and every uh, transaction what took place uh, who authorized this thing and uh, and why people but that's what we do uh, all over the uh, all over the country we're doing it here in Etewini, in Eguruleni, in Johannesburg so one of the EFF they we're not scared of anyone and we we mean exactly that that is why you can ask us about any place there's no corner that won't arrive and there's no one who's not going to account in, in, in this country so there's uh, no there is no local areas for the EFF that's why we went there and the, and the deputy president is leading us to make sure that at the end of the day there are consequences and there will be consequences. Yeah. That matter is not going to be swept under the carpet and they be left like that. Yeah. Those that were involved, they must face, uh, they must face consequences. Mm -hmm. And SG, what I like is that you speak uh, without fear or contradictions, but when we, we, we listen to, I'm not sure if I should say your counterpart, the ANC SG, <laughs> mostly it's a loud mouth, but when we look at you, you are you speak uh, superior logic. You're a thought leader. What what do you think uh, sets you apart from the ANC as Jews always found in hot water by his party for his interests? No, because he's, he's just he's just a clown. I think he 
he took that office uh, uh, his ambition was just uh, being a clown and a celebrity and a and a loud mouth uh, not understanding that office if you understand the office of a secretary general you must go and read the eff constitution section 14. it explains what is the role of a secretary general i was not elected to be a loud mouth uh, my responsibility as a secretary general is to communicate decisions of the organization not opinions not views not our feelings decisions so you can't be allowed mouth and given such a high responsibility by the organization that every everything i've got views uh, myself i've got social media accounts i've got views on what happened with the football of this country i've got views on gbv i've got views on poverty i've got views on the international politics of what is happening in the in, uh, in Palestine by the bombardment uh, of Israel, war crimes are committed by Israel there in Palestine. I've got views on all those things. I've got views of what is happening in the politics in West Africa, the progress that has been made by those comrades of West Africa chasing out uh, uh, the imperialist uh, French uh, regime out of that area. But I was elected given an important responsibility that part of your important mandate is to communicate decisions of the organization so you can't be a loud mouth you can't want to be at the center of everything you can't be, want to use that high office that responsibility for popularity so he seeks popularity i don't seek popularity i dare to service the organization as i was elected to say this is the office that you're going to run you i've got members we've got over one million members i'm the enforcer of the decisions of the organization so if I, if I use that office for the sake of seeking popularity, then I would be, now that I've given this title of being an SG, use that for my personal glory and popularity because I, I never had interest of servicing the organization as it elected me to service the organization. I had interest because I was seeking fame. So if it's seeking fame, I've got no interest of fame. Mine is to carry the mandate of the organization as I was elected to do so. Uh, come the end of my term, go back and present the state of the report, uh, the state of the organization, a report in a conference to say, mm -hmm. this is the state of the organization. This is what uh, you elected me and the collective of the CCT to do. So that, uh, so that is that is the that is the difference. I don't seek uh, I don't seek fame. That's why I'm saying. But the danger of being uh, a clown like him <laughs> is that if you're going to be speaking and communicating views, you're going to confuse. Even your own membership. We've got one million members. Just think every day that they see the ASG talking about this. Sometimes they're going to think it's a decision of the EFF. They're going to think it's a decision of the of the organization because this person's mandate is to communicate decisions. Only to find out that now I'm communicating my views. Sometimes, and you can see that is a fool. He even communicates even before the official statements of the of the ANC. And ANC before it releases a statement. He has released a statement himself because he seeks popularity. I don't seek fame. I don't seek popularity. I know that I'm given an office that is one of the important offices to keep the organization intact. And it needs a sober person. It needs a, a matured person. It doesn't need a person who just like hype, who's a stuntman, who moves around and do those things. That's why I'm saying I've got views, but I know the responsibility that I'm given. Maybe once uh, I'm done with that responsibility, then I can go and do, but if you respect the organization, you respect the membership that uh, elected you to that, just a simple thing of respect, you know that this I cannot do. I'm given this responsibility, I cannot confuse this organization. Mm -hmm. That is why we remain a proper organized uh, formation in the EFF. I've got views on a uh, public representative that, no, you can't do this, but I'm the one who must go and enforce the same decisions. Why would I go on Twitter and say, yeah, this is what I'm thinking of public representatives yeah. of the EFF yeah. who did not bring buses. Then tomorrow I'm the same person who must go and implement the same decision. Yeah. How is that going, going to work? I'm going to mess up the whole organization. Yeah. So that's why it's an office that needs maximum discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to do that on daily basis, even on jokes. I want to mm -hmm. participate. You know, Twitter, they just, uh, there are jokes, there's everything. Sometimes I want to say, hey, let me enter this joke. I, but I'm thinking that yeah, I've got one million is, members yeah. ship of this organization, I've got uh, voters of this organization, I've got the aspirations and the hopes of people of this country that are depending on this organization as their last weapon uh, in their hands, as the only alternative 
and I've been given this important role of being a Secretary General. I have to respect that, I have to respect the leadership collective that I'm with, uh, that I was elected with, uh, the membership, the voters, mm -hmm. and everyone else. That is why the EFF, I cannot take it as my own yeah. private arrangement that I can do as I please with. When it mm -hmm. comes to the work of the EFF and anyone, especially that mm -hmm. Office of the Secretariat, yeah. you must know that you've been given a responsibility by ordinary people yeah. that really hope and trust and there's nothing special about you. They just said, this time around, can we give you this responsibility? And the mm -hmm. only thing you can uh, and, uh, respond to them is to respect yeah. uh, those people by making sure that you do the work of the organization, mm -hmm. you make sure that you do exactly what the constitution mm -hmm. of the organization says about your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So mine is to uh, to deal with the administrative part of the of the organization, make sure that decisions of the leadership and the structures are communicated to all members, to all structures, timelessly, mm -hmm. and resolutions are implemented mm -hmm. timelessly in the way that the organization has resolved. Mm -hmm. And I must see to them that yeah. all those things are done. And the crux of what you're saying is the maximum discipline that, of course, will allow you as a leader to defend your organization in public and in, in private. There was an incident where there were t-shirts that were handed out to uh, these people who were, you know, uh, post chat to be leaving the EFF and they were given EFF uh, t-shirts and only to take it out to, to remain with the EFF t-shirt. I don't know if you have seen that video. What, would you say the EFF uh, membership has declined uh, since we launched the one million membership campaign or it's just a circus that has been uh, that is playing out? No, it has not declined. Actually, it's increasing even now when we are putting up structures. There are people who say, I want to be part of the structures, but uh, I need a membership form. Mm -hmm. So we are the only organization that is growing, and it's not us, it's science. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone else, including those that are doing polling and everything else, even now, the, the mm -hmm. poll that was released by Ipsos, mm -hmm. it shows that the, sure. uh, the EFF is the only organization that is increasing. Mm -hmm. And an organization can increase on, voter, on its voter base without increasing its membership base. Mm -hmm. It's just simple. Like, just a, just a simple process like that. Mm -hmm. You can say anything that you want to say to say, no, we are growing as an organization as long as your membership base is not growing. Mm -hmm. Because it's only members who go and, and persuade other community members uh, in their homes, in their villages, in their areas where they come from to vote for this organization. So once you see an organization that is growing, mm -hmm. you must know that the base of that is that it clearly its membership is growing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just as simple. Uh, it's just as simple like that. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. So, we our membership is growing, but those are ANC stands. They've been doing those things since uh, we started participating in elections in 2014. It's people who have got no plan. Mm -hmm. We don't do those things because we've got a plan. They've got no plan. They've got no ideas. They've got nothing. So that's why they will go and buy EFF t-shirts. But TG is very happy with that uh, process because when they buy t-shirts, it means more money for the EFF because mm -hmm. we make our money through our own merchandise. So when they continue doing that, one person I know that he, she doesn't complain is TG. And let them continue buying our, uh, our t-shirts. They are available, they are for sale. Mm -hmm. But you know that it's just uh, people who've got, who have uh, who've got no plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, to show that they've got no plan, they are, they are government. Instead of servicing our people, instead of creating jobs, instead of making sure that uh, there's clear service deliveries, making sure that the country is safe, making sure that they're reducing mm -hmm. the high levels of GBV, mm -hmm. they are busy buying t-shirts, mm -hmm. using state machinery, because even that car that was distributing t-shirt, mm -hmm. that's a state car with blue lights that's supposed to be servicing our people, but they use it to go and buy EFF t-shirts and, and go and create stands there. But the SG is a stand man. Yeah. So uh, when we see those gimmicks, you must know that it's left from their SG's office because he's a man of gimmicks and stands. So, that's what he that's what he enjoys so those stands they're going to continue doing them up until elections mm -hmm. but uh, we know that you are preparing for their yeah. burial so after the elections yeah. we are liquidating them and then Ab it ends. absolutely absolutely and as per the ipsos uh, research outcomes it shows that there won't be an outright uh, winner in the 2024 uh, elections could you give us a sense of how the eff is working hard to ensure that it gets a majority as I, as, as, I, as I said, we've got a plan on the Victor Manual. Mm -hmm. We've established structures, we're launching a manifesto. The, mm -hmm. We're going to be the very first uh, real organization mm -hmm. to launch the manifesto. So we've given ourselves enough time, mm -hmm. uh, there's clear timelines, 
in the victory manual of the EFF on what needs to happen and which day, and we're meeting all the targets. There's nothing that after adopting that victory manual we've shifted to say the CETF must meet and then yeah. want to postpone this from here. We're going to have provincial manifestos, all of them, they're going to sit uh, within the, uh, the, uh, the the right time. Mm -hmm. So that's what leadership is about. That's yeah. what uh, accountability is about. It's about uh, making sure that you're going to deliver. As the, Our constitution says that as a fighter, you must do your own assessment. Did you deliver on the mandate of the organization? Is it of quality and is it at the right time? Mm -hmm. uh, or on the time that you set yourself? We mm -hmm. set timelines for ourselves and we meet those timelines. So we, we know we've got, a, we've got a, a, a clear plan, but Ipsos, they, 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 they do that and they are very good, but mm -hmm. remember 2019, they couldn't call the EFF on what is going to happen here in KZN. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we see the polls, we observe them, mm -hmm. and, 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 and we know that they come from credible organizations, mm -hmm. but we, we're not living up to the polls. That's why I said we are not an organization that uh, works with miracles. We work on the ground, we've got structures now, we're going to turn those uh, those structures mm -hmm. are ready. They, all of them, they are they are on standby now, agitated, waiting for the commander in chief to give the line of march. So that when he finishes here, they take over the uh, the whole manifesto. They run with it permanently up until we deliver victory. Victory we're going to deliver, uh, and nothing is going to stop us yeah. because we do it ourselves. We, we're not depending on anyone. We're not depending on any state resources. We're not using anything. We know that for us to be through uh, leaders of society, mm -hmm. we must go to the ground and be with our people. Mm -hmm. And we are that organization that is found amongst its people, yeah. our structures. There's no one who's going to move from town. Yeah, in Ete, we need to go and campaign in Mlas. Mm -hmm. Those that are in Mlas, it's structures, they are the ones who are going to run the campaign. Mm -hmm. So once we press the party and say, fighters on the 11th of November, mm -hmm. all of you are on the ground, mm -hmm. it means the entire uh, country, the whole 23,000 yeah. VDs, mm -hmm. is going to be different. Uh, Voice is one message. Mm -hmm. And how is the notion 2024 is our 1994 aligned to our route to, to victory? Look, the, it, it, it's about time. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, everyone else we've accepted 30 years, uh, it's enough. And the young people, they've come in their numbers. You see on the last voter registration uh, in uh, November, young people have come uh, in their numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, the young people in the institutions of higher learning, mm -hmm. all of them decisively, they are members of the, and voters of the EFL. Mm -hmm. So when that uh, 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 slogan of uh, 2024 is our 1994, it came with, uh, it came with uh, young people in the EFF, mm -hmm. and all of us were agreeing that that is going to be a big uh, shift in this country. 1994, mm -hmm. it changed the face of this country, mm -hmm. and 2024 is going to change the face of this country and the EFF is going to be in the forefront mm -hmm. leading to that change and ushering that change and making sure that the territory of South Africa is a liberated zone finally. And uh, SG, this venue looks sacred and uh, you know the reason why the EFF has chosen uh, this venue, I've already outlined the, the reasons, but there mm -hmm. have been threats that have been made by people like uh, Gizwe. Um, how is the EFF dealing with that situation? Uh, obviously, fighters are waiting to hear from the leadership now. Should we be worried? Uh, can you allay the fears? Are we safe to come here? No, 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 no. We are safe, fighters. Uh, that's why I'm saying they are stunned people. You know, they even if you go to a club, there, there are people called uh, I don't know, they're called stand men or gimmicks that uh, just just go yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have a song. They don't have anything. They are not DJs. They just go and they make noise. So people like Gizu, they are just say, clowns like that. He's just clowning. He doesn't control anything. He's got no capacity of anything. He's a small boy. Well, that's why I said to you earlier on, we're born here. We're raised here. We, 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 we are not visitors. We don't, we, we don't speak yeah. of these territories. If it's a territory that we don't know. So anyone who says, uh, uh, no, uh, there can't be a rally uh, like him, he's just talking. He's got no capacity. We, we don't know. If we want to talk man to man, we can tell him straight that, we don't even know graves that are related to you, that were linked to you. So he can't, he can't come and threaten us with violence. That one, he can't, he can't do it. So fighters, uh, I was saying to the fighters uh, in one meeting that, you know, in the continent, uh, when uh, some president, one president, after he won uh, elections, and on his day of inauguration, so I was fortunate to be in that country, and then there was a, a, a car before he went to the stadium. There were cars all over that uh, on the road that is going to use 
that uh, as the, pre the president is coming so they're saying the president will pass here in the next 20 minutes and this road must be clean like paper so that leadership is coming so all the roads to Mosma Bida on the 10th of uh, February they're going to be clean like paper there's no one of all regions uh, the even police they just left it off to say ah, that's not even an, an, an issue so it's just a fool who's just uh, making noise but obviously you know people that uh, some of them they've built carriers around the EFF name so if you're going to want to be popular you'll go and have these things of social media and we have to mention the EFF It's not the first one there are many that have been foolish like that saying they're going to stop the EFF even they're counting all of them they, they're the same West copies is the same story so there's there's no crisis so fighters they must know that all roads in the entire province are clean uh, that on the 10th of uh, of uh, February even authorities they've spoken to all the districts in terms of policing traffic cops everyone they know that on the 10th of February all the roads of this province they're going to be leading to Moses Mapida and no one is going to disrupt that and no one has got the capacity of disrupting this uh, this uh, this uh, this manifest so it's a, it's a small poison an issue uh, he said the uh, one of those uh, hallucinations that he, he does is that uh, if he, uh, the EFF comes here, uh, it rather die. So if he, if he's, we hope his insurance and must go there in place, because if he's wishing for death, he must come here. Uh, uh, but one thing we know for sure is that the rally is going to happen. It's going to take place, yeah. and there's no one, there's no one in the province who's got the capacity to stop the EFF. Not here, including the state missionary. Yeah. By the way, uh, we sit with them, we plan with them. The police who are they are very cooperative, provincial police, the Teban Metropolis, they're part of our planning. And we said, this is what we intend to do. We're going to make sure that we comply with the laws of the country. We make sure the safety, the people that are coming here. The president himself, the commander in chief, he is responsible for each and every individual who's going to come here. Even today, part of our planning meeting, he was still emphasizing that because he knows that as a president himself, if there's going to be a loss of life or anything, he's going to take full responsibility. That's the kind of a leader that he is. Fighters, the SG has spoken. All roads lead to Moses Mabida. So, yeah, please come in your numbers uh, to hear Superior Logic when the CIC delivers the EFF manifest on the 10th of February 2024. SG, this year is going to be very eventful. The EFF is going to convene its uh, third uh, National People's Assembly. Talk us through what can we expect in that conference. No, we what's going to happen? It's uh, as per, as mandated by the Constitution mm -hmm. that the national leadership of the EFF must go to uh, uh, periodic elections every five years. So we are finishing our five years. Mm -hmm. uh, we are given a mandate in 2019 by the membership of the EFF. Uh, resolutions of what we need to do so we're going to go back and account and uh, hand over the organization to mm -hmm. its uh, uh, real owners which is the members of the EFF those are the owners of the EFF so mm -hmm. it's going to sit in December as I said that we we, we, we put programs and we meet our own programs mm -hmm. so when we left uh, Nasrak in 2019 mm -hmm. we knew that five years uh, at the end of that five years, we must be in the uh, back to give the, mm -hmm. uh, that account of how did we perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. There's no shifting on anything. Uh, when that five year come to an end, uh, as the central command team led by the, the CIC, mm -hmm. we're going back to the conference to say to the membership of the EFF, this is what you mandated us to do. Mm -hmm. This is what we, this is what you achieved. Uh, we hand it back to the to the to the owners of the organization, and from there they will, uh, as they've done uh, in the 2019 uh, NPA. We went to the NPA in 2014, the first one. Mm -hmm. The mandates were given. We went to 2019, 2020, uh, 2024. It's a no uh, that we must go back and account, mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. Uh, the organization. That's what is uh, asked by our constitution that. There, there must be mandate and accountability. Mm -hmm. So we have been uh, on that mandate for the last uh, five years. Mm -hmm. We must go now in December for accountability. Mm -hmm. So it's, no, it's nothing uh, new. It's what uh, a, a democratic organization they are about, that they must go to uh, 
periodic uh, accountability uh, uh, conferences where uh, leadership gets elected uh, and all that. So it's the same. The PPAs have done it, the RPAs have done it, the NPA, it's a third one. So mm. in December, we're going to the NPA to, to give the state of the organization to go and account on mm. what uh, the delegates of uh, the 2019 NPA mm. said we must go and do. So we'll go and hand over the, the organization back mm. to them and uh, give the state of the organization. Yeah. I know you normally don't give your views, but uh, I want to understand, is the EFF ready for a new president uh, other than uh, CIC, Julius Malema? No, as president has said, the organization is ready for anything. Mm -hmm. It's ready for anything, but as that's why I'm saying that as the leadership, mm -hmm. your role is to go and implement the mandate mm -hmm. that you've been given during that term. Mm -hmm. Once you finish, you go back mm -hmm. to that same conference with the same delegates mm -hmm. and hand over the organization to the owners. And the owners are the ones who decide what become the future of the organization or another five, uh, another five years. Mm -hmm. So it's ready for everything. It's a, it's a living organization. So that is the task that has been given to us now as a CCT. Mm -hmm. Nothing else, not to give views of whether uh, they're ready for a different president. No, no, no. Especially myself as an SU, I don't have that. We don't have that mandate. Ours is to say, here yeah, are resolutions that were given in 2019. Mm -hmm. That's a roadmap that uh, the conference gave us. They said, you're going to move from here up until you finish here. Once you are done, you come back with what we've given. And in those resolutions, there was no resolution that says, part of it is to say, are we ready to have a, a different president? There's no resolution like that. The resolution, it's what we're supposed to implement. And that's what we must take back with an organizational report uh, that will be adopted by the CCT. It's mm -hmm. a joint, the CCT report is not my yeah. personal report. Mm -hmm. We'll go and say, here is the mandate based on the resolutions that you gave us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're coming back to account, here's the organization and, and ours ends here. Mm -hmm. Then the organization will sit again and deliberate and take uh, a decision on what must happen for the next five years because the NPA, it only sits mm -hmm. once every five years. So even the delegates that will be there, they will sit after receiving a report to say, okay, fine, this is what needs to happen for the next five years. Mm -hmm. Just that talks to that talks to uh, talks to everything. Mm -hmm. So it's not a it's not a it's not even an issue. It's not even a discussion for us mm -hmm. is to go and deliver on go and account on what we were sent to us. So we can't be sent to go and and, and get sugar cane and then you come back mm -hmm. and say, yeah, we, we got potatoes. No, no, that's mm -hmm. not what we sent. Yeah. We're going to come back and say, you send us to this field to say, go and, uh, and plow sugar cane, where is the sugar cane? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what we do with that. It, it, it ends like that. Yeah. That's what discipline and being an organization is about. Know your mandate, know what has been mm -hmm. tasked you to do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly that uh, we intend yeah. to do as a CCT, to go back yeah. and account on the mandate that we're given in 2019. Yeah. Yeah, and all wishes, uh, well wishes to the leadership of the EFF going into the conference. Now, uh, coming back to KZN, uh, the issue of there's an issue of there's an issue about the uh, Amazulu king, uh, Mrs. Zulu uh, Gazuli team, uh, that well, there are claims that is not uh, the rightful king of uh, Amazon. What is the EFF standpoint? We understand now the Pretoria High Court has granted uh, President Ramaphosa leave to appeal the judgment that uh, obviously nullified or set aside his rec recognition. Look, we, 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 we observed what happened in the, the Pretoria Court mm -hmm. and we saw a statement that has been granted uh, leave to appeal where an organization and uh, through the press conference where the president has led us uh, giving a, a state and the view of the CCT that uh, we we want stability in case that and we want the, the that uh, kingdom of the Zulus with such a rich history and one of the last standing kingdoms that are respected in the continent that uh, there must be peace, there must be stability. We are not uh, interested on these squabbles and everything who must do this and this. We came here for the coronation. He was here, the president was here mm -hmm. to, to, sure. to accept and say mm -hmm. he is the king of the Zulus and, uh, and we remain uh, in salutation of the sitting king of the Zulus, mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Zulu, which by it, mm -hmm. he, he, he remains our king and, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, uh, until such time. So we are not uh, 
in, into courts who are not, uh, uh, the courts will deal what they deal with. Or mm -hmm. As things stand from the EFF mm -hmm. point of view, we've got a king of the Zulus and we're in salutation. That's why even after we still went to visit the king, the leadership, mm -hmm. Just uh, last month when we started here, yeah, we went to visit the king uh, to say uh, we're in salutation mm -hmm. we're under the leadership of the king of the Zulus as he's sitting on the throne and, uh, and, and the matter ends there. So there's, there's nothing else to, to be dealing with courts. They just uh, deal with what they are dealing with. But as things stand from the EFS side, we've got one king, Isiru uh, Mrs. Zulu, and, uh, mm -hmm. and we salute him. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is why yeah. even now, Part of this is we've been informed. Uh, even the royal family, they are coming. They've oh, confirmed. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, they've received the invite and they've confirmed mm -hmm. that they're going to be joining us in the launch of the manifest of the EF. So mm -hmm. it's all systems go. And we want to call on all fighters, people of South Africa, that on the 10th of uh, February, all of us, it's going to be safe, it's going to be free, it's going to be peaceful. Mm -hmm. Come to witness. Uh, the, the memorable launch of the EFF on this decisive 2024 election. The Commander-in-Chief will be here. He's here in the province, uh, <laughs> by the way. He's been here since we took a decision to come here. So he has never left. Ladies and gentlemen, the SG has spoken loud and clear. All roads lead to Moses Mabida, the beautiful Moses Mabida, on the 10th of February, 2024. The EFF will be launching it's a manifesto here at this very venue. My name is Titus Tungu and we've come to the end of uh, today's special edition of the EFF podcast. Remember to subscribe on the EFF YouTube channel. Until we meet again, Uja Ikwenget. Kanimam. Stand up South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a covert thing.